you guys have had a, a very strong relationship with uh, with Side One Dummy Records. Do you think that uh, you guys would be where you are today without that uh, that partnership between the two? I don't know. I, I, it's hard to say. You know, like well, I, I'm happy that we've had the kind of. Uh, Relationship that we've had all these years, and and the guys Joe Bill that run the label, and, and all the guys there, Eddie and and um, John that have been there kind of since we started with them. Uh, they've all helped us out. Thomas, the guy that does all our international stuff, and like it's just such a family to us. And and it's also nice knowing that. I mean, I think what would have happened had we been on a major label that everybody we knew when we signed would be gone by now. Yeah. And we've never had to worry about that kind of thing. It's always been the guys who were. You know who run the label, who write the checks. They're the guys we talk to when we discuss things. And there's that that strong belief uh, within the band from the label, as opposed to just okay, here's something that's going to fit in this. Yeah, this niche. absolutely. And you know, they're they're the first guys that would be like, look, you guys know what you're doing better than we do. You know, like we can put your records in stores, and we can, you know, and Joe's got his radio show now in the states in a bunch of cities. So he's like, I can go, just, you know, shove this stuff into a record state, yeah. you know, a, a record store, or a radio station, and say like, try this out, try this out, try this out, try this out, try this out until they break. But, um, you know, like, it, it's nice to know that those guys are the guys in your corner, you know, and that, you know, they've been, uh, they've been great for us, you know, and they've never, they just, they've never ever thought of telling us what to do or, mm -hmm. or we, maybe we think maybe you should push your music this way, you know, they're just like, you do what you do and we'll take care of the marketing. Sounds like a great relationship. Yeah. yeah. Um, you guys are a bit, bit of a political band as well. You have that, uh, that side to you, not as much as some of the other ones, but you were involved with, uh, <laughs> we're no anti yeah, uh, you guys were involved with uh, punk voter and rock against Bush. Mm -hmm. Um, what is the most frightening thing, um, to you personally about what's coming up around in world politics? Um, in world politics, I think it's just the same, you know, it's the same old thing that's been going on since the dawn of time, and that's just uh, people get hurt, they get angry, and they try to kill each other. And, you know, I, I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Although, you know, as Dave says, it went on for for as long as it went on anywhere in Ireland, and they yeah. finally managed to kind of put it beside. So there's hope. You know, you think if you can take that same principle, that set of principles, and move it around the planet, however they made it work in Ireland, they can make it work everywhere else. We'll flip sides here. What's the most promising thing, um, be it with the, the new uh, new administration in, in uh, the states or, or something else that you're seeing politically? What is giving you hope? I think the two. Uh, I think it's it's twofold. I think the first thing is that Americans are actually seeing and maybe learning to be held responsible for their actions, and not that you know like losing your home is a great thing or anything, but the banks were only half responsible for signing crap loans. You know, yeah. like people knew they were getting over the hands, and some people didn't, and you know. God bless them. But uh, I think it, the, the American public as a whole has kind of had its, like, you know, oh, second in their belt. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, Obama's, he's a politician like everybody else, and he's got his agendas that are, you know, a far cry better than the Bush administration agendas. But, you know, I think if people pin their hopes on him solving the problem, they're it's, still pinning it Yeah, in exactly. Yeah. You've got to take it into your own hands. And, and I think that they are more, more and more like, I think more and more Americans are realizing that government is not you know the magic fairy yeah. wand and that you've got to just get your feet in and dig in and like take care of your problems yourself and and hopefully take care of some you know government problems yeah, at the same take time. some ownership as well yeah exactly. to what's going on and that's not just america that's globally yeah I think. well i hope so <laughs> yeah for, for humanity's sake let's <laughs> uh now everyone has their their distinct role musically within the band um but they, they also have something else that they bring to the band you're you're known as sort of the macgyver be able to, uh, that, yeah. What's been the the best time that you've been able to come through with uh, you know rigging something together? To it's, been, it's been a while just because now we've got a great crew that kind of handles all that stuff for us. But I remember in the early days, like it would be I'd be playing mandolin and an amp would blow up and I'd have to like run across stage, like rewire, like figure out what's going on, get it going, and then try to finish out the song with the yeah. mandolin at the same time. And so I'd have it thrown over my back with like a soldering iron and thing. Those it's been a long time since I've had to pull that off, but it's. Uh, but you know, I've had to kind of jury rig it. You know, I don't play with much finesse, and my instruments aren't particularly robust. You know, the banjo and the mandolin are pretty delicate things. So, I've had to, I've had to pull some you know some duct tape out of the back pocket yeah. midway through a show, or I drop a strap all the time. One of my straps is snap, and I'm like, you know, like pulling a cable tie out and having to rig it, <laughs> and try to finish the song out. You do right it yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> uh, I always like to ask uh, bands, especially bands that have been around for the, for the time that you've been around. Um, obviously, it, it, it crosses um, generations. I mean, you can have kids bring their grandparents to the show. 
What, uh, what kind of feeling is that for you? I mean, the style of the music as well really lends itself to that. I think it's awesome. Like, I just, we were playing in San Diego last month and this uh, woman came up to me and she's like, oh, it's my granddad's, uh, my uh, dad's 75th birthday and he wanted to come here for the show. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. So I go over with her and she's with her daughter and, and her dad's there and uh, I said, so uh, your kids got you into this stuff? And the, the granddaughter was like, no, no, grandpa got us into this. Nice. And I'm like, really? And when I hear that, it's just, it's got to be the, the best thing, just because I, I don't think that there's any, I think anything you can do that can bring families back together and like, and give them something to communicate with, it, it can't be a bad thing. And there's been tons of great stories uh, with your band and, and, and fans of the band that have had those stories work cross generationally. It's yeah, yeah. It's, it's brought people together and the band together as well. Yeah, it makes me very proud to be able to kind of accomplish that. Uh, now another thing, bands that have been around a while, side projects start to emerge. Mm -hmm. uh, Nathan Maxwell is doing his thing now. Mm -hmm. uh, do you foresee a lot of uh, focus going towards these side project things, or is it something that just when there is that downtime, um, they'll go off and do their own thing, but the the overall collective of Floggy Molly is still there and strong. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that the, the that there's. I mean, we don't foresee an end to this anytime soon. But but it's definitely, you know, it is it, it, the the Floggy Molly sound is what it is, and, and the, we have a lot of different interests outside of that. So there's definitely like that kind of pull to, you know, we all do a lot of writing and. and uh, there's definitely that pull to kind of like have your own distinctive thing going on outside of that um, flog and mother sound. But, um, but I don't think, I mean, we all kind of have the agreement that like, we can all do what we're going to do, and it, but we would never want it to take away from what has kind of like, me. yeah, put us out there in the first place. I think that's a healthy, healthy uh, relationship to have. Yeah. Uh, any, any bands that you guys have been exposed to that you really like to uh, maybe mention to the Punk Radio cast listeners and viewers that they might not be aware of uh, bands like this? I think most people are probably more aware of what's going on out there than we are just because, uh, you know, our music has, has to come from like wherever we are on the road. And, yeah. and so it's, it's difficult to kind of like get exposed to new stuff when you're just always out on the road. But, um, you know, most of who we've come in contact with have been guys, you know, like uh, Reverend Payton and his big, yeah. his big damn, damn band, band and those guys, you know, we, we played a festival show with them and took them on tour and then they got on our label and, you know, it's that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's a, yeah, the Avid Brothers are a band that uh, uh, Dennis and I are really big fans of and they just have a sound that's kind of like not, um, you know, not like what a lot of other people are doing right now. And, uh, and it's you know it's honest. I think that, that that's kind of the quality and a lot of the, that music um, that draws us to it is like if it has that like kind of honest legitimacy. That's yeah. what we're into. Nothing prefabricated or uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, it can be produced. You can you can produce amazing music with tons of layers. But if that if your heart and soul isn't if in the it, message isn't there, yeah, it's just exactly. a bunch of layers on nothing. Exactly. Right? So you know, so there are guys doing you know phenomenal. You look at bands like. Um, like uh, Arcade Fire, and you know, there's 36 things going on at once on that band, but you know, they got the conviction to pull it off. So, yep. well, anything else you, that you want to get out there before we wrap it up? Oh, no, just thanks to everybody for coming out. We really appreciate uh, all the support we've had over the years from everybody, and we'll keep doing it if you keep coming. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you for your time. No worry, man.